Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to slow stitch three whimsical mushrooms to use in your slow stitching pieces. Now, the idea with slow stitching these mushrooms is they're a bit abstract, they're whimsical, and they're fun. I break it down into three main parts of the mushroom, the cap, the gills, and the stem. But you really only need the cap and the stem to make a mushroom. The gills are kind of like a little bonus, and they make it very recognizable as a mushroom. Now the stem can be straight or curved, the cap can be small or long, plump, rounded and domed, or pointy. And what makes it really fun is that you can take the mushroom and kind of turn it upside down like an inverted umbrella. Mushrooms have a lot of personality, and they're really popular and trending right now. They actually call it mushroom core, and it's a decorating theme, a cottage core theme. Basically, you're taking the fairy tale element of mushrooms, the idea of it being somewhere in a European forest, and bring it into your home. It's a fun idea. So let me show you how I do it. So to get started making the mushrooms, I chose some really cute fabric to make the mushroom tops. I think that's what makes it so whimsical. Now you could find patterned fabric with dots, which is so appropriate for mushrooms, but you don't have to stop there. There are so many options, floral print, crazy colors. It's just great. And then for the stems and the underside, I like to use a neutral color and I tend to stick with an off white. These are just different shades of that color. Now, depending on the mushroom you make, you'll get different effects. There are three main components to a mushroom, but really there's only two that are required at minimum. So there's the cap, the gills, and the stem. You can leave out the gills. It's always a question, do you want gills or not? But if you have the cap and the stem, it's clearly a mushroom. And there's so many variations within that. So I'm gonna show you three versions now. We'll get started right away. The first one we'll make is our simplest mushroom, and that's just gonna be the cap and the stem. So I'm just gonna use this little fabric here. It's already printed in that shape. So I can just take my scissors and I'll just trim away. Now for your stem, you can make it leaning, you can make it curved. I'm just gonna keep this one straight because that's the type of fabric I had. So I'll stick this right here. And now I just need a little cap. So with the cap, there's variations. Do you want a domed cap? Do you want a pointy cap? Do you want a long, narrow cap? Or do you want a cap like an inverted umbrella? There's just so many options. I'm gonna take this fabric here, I think it's adorable. And I'm just gonna create kind of a mushroom-shaped cap. So I'm gonna fold my fabric in half just so I can get it symmetrical. And then I'll start at the top and then I'm just gonna bring it down in like a bell jar, pull it out. So it's a pretty large mushroom, but it's recognizable as a mushroom. It's kind of adorable. So now all I have to do is take my thread that matches like maybe a beige and a peach, and I'm just gonna tack it down with a running stitch all the way around the shapes. If I wanna do some shading, I'll take some darker thread and just stitch underneath here. But for this simple mushroom, I'm just gonna tack it down. So here's how the mushroom looks when it's all stitched down. I did a little bit of shading here, but not very much. I just used my stitches to act like the shade from the mushroom cap. So now let's start our second mushroom. This mushroom's gonna be inverted, and it's gonna be short, and it's gonna tilt. So I like to flip my fabric over so that the lines won't show. I'm also using a heat erasable pen, but that's just optional. So to do that, I like to sketch out the entire underneath of the mushroom. And I leave a little extra fabric up top just so it's seamless. So it's going to kind of look like this where the mushroom cap is going up. And then I have the stem kind of curved here. So this is the mushroom, the underside, and the actual cap will be something like this. But this is looking underneath it, and this is where the gills would be. So I'm not gonna cut the entire cap, but I'll start here, cutting around the edge. And the stem that has a little bit of a tilt to it. 
So this will be reversed when I flip it over, and I don't mind that. So I have the base of my mushroom, and now I'm just gonna cut out a little bit up top here. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything. And so that's the base of the mushroom and the gills. Now I need a top for that mushroom. I'm gonna take this blue fabric, it's really cute. Flip my mushroom over again. And I can just trace how I want that to look. So I want that mushroom to go a little bit higher. And then come around. And this one's not a perfect mushroom. This line here will connect. So that will just go like that. I'll cut this part out. And when I flip it over, it's kind of the inverted mushroom here. And so now when I tack it down, I'm gonna start here. I want this to just round up a little bit and my gills are gonna come up from the center. So I always start with my center gill and then I just split it in half, kind of tracing the shape around it. And I'll split it in half again. And then those are the gills. You can do far more if you want. I just think that's really cute. Now for mushrooms, to make it a little more whimsical, you might wanna stitch like a little bug here up top or a frog or something that would land on a mushroom be found in nature, kind of like a little fairy tale or something from a, an old Disney movie. So right now, I'll just pin it down and then I'm gonna stitch down and I'm gonna start with the gills. So I'm gonna pin this all down together. That's why I have that overlap between that fabric and that mushroom cap, because I can just stick a pin there. I'm gonna take some pearl cotton, it's the same color that I used here, and it'll just show up as texture. Of course, you can choose a different color. You can go with a darker color. It's up to you. And I'm gonna start in the center. And I'm gonna start here at the base and just stitch my gills. Now this is a pretty long stitch, so I think I'll just divide it in half. I'll stitch one half and then come up and stitch the final half. And I'll continue doing that around the gills, stitch it down around the outside, and the same thing with the blue mushroom cap here. So that's how it looks all stitched. And instead of a little bug, which I still might put on at some point, I'm just gonna stitch some French knots, those little dots on the mushroom, they're called scales. So I'll just haphazardly choose a spot and make a French knot. Pull my thread through, wrap my needle three or four times, Go back down, keeping the tension on the thread, and then I have a French knot. So I'll do that a few times. So that's the mushroom with the little scales stitched on top with the French knots. So cute. Now for the last mushroom, I'm going to do a mushroom with a stem, some gills, and the stalk, but I'm also going to do the little apron that you see on some mushrooms. So to do that, I'm going to use this color fabric here and I'll make my sketch first. So I want the stalk to come down kind of to an angle here like this and then the top of the mushroom is going to be a kind of a longer mushroom tapered up top. You can play around with the exact shape but I'm not going to cut it out of this fabric here, but I do need to cut down here. I want the mushroom cap to go like this, so the gills will only be here and here, and this part will be the part up top. So to make the apron, however, it's, the apron's going to come down like this and just come out a few times, maybe not as many ruffles as I made here. So when I cut out, I'm gonna cut out again, a little bit above my piece, my mushroom top, just to about there. So I'll cut this out. 
So I have the base of my mushroom here. I can always flip this around as well. And now I need to make the top. So I'll flip this over. And I want my top to come down to approximately here. So I'll put the top down here. This is where I want it to come out. I want it to come up. And around. So I'll make this line here and now I'll cut out that mushroom. So there I have the mushroom cap. I can decide how I want it. I think I actually like it just like that. So that looks adorable. So I'll tack everything down just with the stitches and then I'll show you how I make the gills on this one. It's just slightly different. So that's how I stitch down this mushroom. You can see a little apron here made a little bit of dimension with the stitching and I stitched around as well as the mushroom cap. Now I want to make some gills coming from either side of this mushroom. So I'm going to start here with my stitch and I can make this a double stitch but I'm just going to make it a single stitch right now just to show you. I'm going to go across to right up here. It's a long stitch but I think it's okay. And I'm going to come back down a very similar spot just right next to where I came up the first time. And I'm going to go and divide that in half. Roughly, I'm not, I'm not going to measure. And I'm going to come back to that spot. And now those two sections, I'm going to divide in half. Each section I'll divide in half. And the reason I do this instead of just stitching the lines is because it makes for a neater effect. If you prefer to stitch from right to left, go right ahead. I just find this method is the best one that works for me and it eliminates any measuring that I have to do. So again I stitch down dividing it in half and I do the same thing. So those are my three mushrooms. I'll knot that thread on the back and I'll be done. If I want to make this a little more whimsical I can add a little bug or a butterfly, a bee, something like that. Maybe stitch some grass here in the base. I want to show you some ideas where you can take that mushroom and just play around with it some more. Those are just three basic ideas. You can mix and match and change things accordingly. So I also made this little book here. The spine is the top, so it's kind of a flip book. I have just a simple mushroom here with the gills and the scales. And I just did some stitching that coordinated with the colors. Threw in a button and some labels. Where I showed making those little labels. Um, for the technique in that. And I'll link that video below. Then on the next page, I have a few more mushrooms. Again, with the scales, a main mushroom, and some little trinkets here, and another label, and a tab on the side. I have one over here where I played with different ribbons and stitches. I added lots of scales in different colors. I didn't just stick with the white. And I kind of put them on one side like the different mushroom effect. And then my last one, a large mushroom. I stitched a ring, just to add some interest here, and made a little fabric collage. So I took that idea of using all those mushrooms and put them in a little book here, a little mushroom booklet. I think it's adorable. So those are three ways that I use whimsical mushrooms in my work. There are many ways you can vary this as well, and it's a very fun technique. I particularly enjoy using really fun prints of fabric, something really unexpected and cute and very much off the wall. Pinks and purples, very non-mushroom colors. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And please consider becoming a paid member of my channel, where I give behind the scenes footage and additional techniques. Thanks for joining me today.